Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Your Your Man with Birmingham City. We are in the Premier League. This will be our first season and we've got a summer transfer window to review. So, we have made quite a number of signings. If you watched the last episode, you will know I didn't really rate my squad that highly to be able to compete in the Premier League. So, a lot of new faces were required and new faces we certainly have got. We've spent quite a lot of money, £53 million in the end, whilst bringing in £20 million. And I think I'm, I'm relatively pleased with what we've done. There was a little bit of a scattergun approach pr pretty early in the window, but we refined that in two of our new signs as well are just absolutely unbelievable. But before we get into any of that, we will first look at the outs. Adam Armstrong left to join Barnsley for £12.5 million. He was in the final year of his deal. He was never going to get any games for me this season, no matter what. We've got better players in pretty much any position he could fill. So uh, happy to get £12.5 million for him. He did okay for us. Seven goals in, well, 31 starts. Maybe he didn't do so good. Um, but happy to see the back of him. Happy to bring the £12.5 million in. Next up was Nathan Holland, left to join Anderlecht for 4.6, could rise to 5.75. Again, someone who found his game time limited last season. He's not going to get game time this season. We'll cash in whilst we can. Uh, Kean McCormack, a youngster. The Watford came in. Me head of youth development accepted the offer. I wasn't... Ugh, I didn't feel the inclination to need to stop this deal. I'm not going to be here beyond this season, so... I'm never going to be able to develop some of these younger boys. Same can be said for the likes of Tom Smith. He has went and joined uh, Southampton for, what was that, about 3.9 million I could potentially rise to. Um, again, too young for me to even care about. Alvaro Jimenez went and joined Rotherham for 800k. He was on about 15k per week at the club, so to get him out the door was absolutely fantastic. 32 years old as well. Never in a million years is he getting anywhere near my squad. Christopher Thomas left to join Huddersfield, another youngster, left back this time for around 1.1 million pounds he didn't really have any potential whatsoever as you can see currently a two star three star according to our scouts so happy to let him leave the club joshua williams is just a youngster left on a free and tate campbell a youngster who has went out on loan so that brings us to the ends and we will start with our loan signs the first of which is oriel it's this french guy from austin <laughs> he's going to be a backup central midfielder uh he's can play in defensive midfield as well should we require him very well rounded physically mentally he's okay technically he's okay as well three and a half star four star just someone to fill out the squad a little bit that can't be said about Ferran Torres we've signed him on loan for the rest of the season from Valencia and he already comes in and is probably our best player now this was a late signing as I was looking for a backup to a right winger he's he's came in and he's definitely going to be a starter he's currently injured or recovering from injury so he won't be involved in today's first match but you can expect to see a lot of this boy valued at 34 and a half million pounds we're not we're paying his wages but we're not paying anything in terms of a monthly fee so we will take that all day all these frees were done by my under 23s uh, manager or my head of youth development however is in control of that so we'll completely ignore them and we'll go on to the fee paying transfers the first of which was Harvard Hettel from Torino, a goalkeeper for £900,000. He will be our first choice. And this, if anybody's playing football manager out there, thinking about the star ratings that you get from your assistant manager, this is why you completely ignore them. He is a fantastic goalkeeper, currently rated a two and a half star. If we compare him with a Naki Pena, who's also a two and a half star keeper in our squad, he is better in pretty much every single aspect. So, the fact that these boys are rated to be the exact same is absolute tosh. He is by far better. And at 900k, I think we've got ourselves a little bit of a bargain. Speaking of bargains, James Garner from Manchester United, £1.2 million. Going to be our first choice defensive midfielder in that deep, deep line playmaker role. His contract was running out towards the end of last season. And the compensation would have been £2.7 million if we had agreed a deal with James Garner. So I bid 1.2 1, 1 million, Manchester United accepted, and he's joined the club. There were other clubs sniffing about as well, so getting that transfer offer in early was definitely to my benefit. And I'm absolutely delighted to be able to sign an English player of this quality at 22 years old. Next up to join the club is Andrea Anderson. We signed him from Lazio for £3.5 million, pounds, and he is a very, very talented attacking midfielder. Again, ignore the star ratings. They're absolutely rubbish. We will compare him with Jude Bellingham, who was going to be our starting attacking midfielder. And as you can see, he's an upgrade pretty much everywhere. Technically, he's far better. Mentally, he's far better. Physically, 
He is better, not quite as significant as the other two, but um, he's going to be absolutely fantastic for us. I don't care what the star ratings say. I think this boy will be a starter. Next up was Thomas Niels, and we're signing for £3.9 million. It was it from Copenhagen? It was £3.9 million. He is a striker by trade. Um, but I did sign him thinking he was going to be our right winger. So he has been trained in that position. And he's absolutely, he's got fantastic stats for that position actually. If we compare him with uh, Ferran Torres, he's probably not quite as good. But not too far off either. Thomas Nielsen in the green, mentally he's, he's a hell of a lot better. Uh, but technically not quite as gifted, physically not quite as gifted in the right areas. Um, but he will be a very, very good backup right winger slash backup striker. Slash probably starter at some point in the season. He's still got a little bit of potential to grow. And uh, for £3.9 million, pounds, I thought it was a good deal. Next up was Alexander Diaz, who we signed for £4 million. Pounds. It was from San Lorenzo. And again, you're probably thinking another striker. Uh, I actually signed him to play left wing. He looks like an incredible inverted winger on that left-hand side. And he will find his, some game time there. He will find some game time up top. He'll probably find some game time at right wing at some point. But he is excellent cover all across that line. And someone you will see a lot of over the course of this season. New signing, Japanese Keiichi Goto for £5 million. We're signing from uh, Nuremberg. It got relegated, so a relegation release clause activated. And again, ignore the star ratings. Two and a half star is absolute tush. If we compare him to... Um, who's our, who was the striker we just talked about? Alexander Diaz. Alexander Diaz is rated as three and a half stars as a striker. And Keiichi Goto is only rated as two and a half star. Now, technically, I'll give him that. Alexander Diaz is a little bit slightly better um, in some areas, but not necessarily in others. Mentally, he's out of this world better. 21 years old, then mentals are absolutely unbelievable. Physically, he's better as well. And he's going to be our starting striker. And a two and a half star player is going to be our starting striker. Absolutely, I'm, I'm delighted to bring him in. The fact that he's Japanese as well brings in extra revenue. So that did play a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of an aspect of that decision was made because of that. Next up was Pablo Martinez Treasure from Newells for six and a half million pounds. He will be our starting left winger. Him and Alexander Diaz will have to complete for that spot. I was mainly, <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I was mainly interested in this guy. I was searching for left wingers um, using the attribute search and he popped up. And he was wanted by Arsenal. So I thought, well, there's got to be something about this boy if he's wanted by Arsenal. So I decided to sign for six and a half million. He is going to initially be our starting left winger. If he doesn't perform, we've got other options. But um, happy to bring him in. Now, these two, I'm hoping these two will absolutely blow your socks off. Because when I saw them, that they were interested in Birmingham and they were available for the sort of fees we paid, I had to jump on it. Mauricio Chan was the first one then from Chivas. £10 million central midfielder. And I mean, just look at him. He's 19 years old. He is absolutely sensational. He's going to be playing in a central midfielder player role. And I expect absolutely huge things from this lad. He is unbelievable for 19. Still got potential to grow. Four-star current. I mean, come on. You, you've, got to, you've got to appreciate him. And if you don't appreciate him, maybe you will appreciate this boy. 17 and a half million pounds. Now, bearing in mind, we had a 36 million pound transfer budget to start with. So deciding, I've decided early on I was going to part with £17.5 million pounds of that for this man. This activated his minimum fee. Andrin Mieder from FC Basel. I mean, centre-half, supreme. Swiss, he's already got five caps. Four-star current, five-star potential. Physicals to dream of. Uh, mental to dream of as well, apart from that aggression, but I'm not really bothered when you look at the rest of it in the whole picture of things. Heading 17, tackling 17, mark on 14. I mean, he is an absolute worldie. He is. He's an absolute world beat. He's going to be one of the best centre-halves in the game, if not already is. And to get him for Birmingham as a newly promoted side is absolutely fantastic. So when everybody's fit and available, this is how I see my starting 11 lining up. Hettel, our new goalkeeper in goal. Keith Lonsdale keeps his space at right back. Three-star current, four-star potential English player. I did want to persist with him if possible and... To be quite honest with you, there weren't really that many real quality right backs available for a decent price. Mader, of course, in defensive uh, centre half with Harley Dean will probably be partnering him. That will be a spot that's up for contention with Philippe Sandler. But um, Harley Dean at least gets the initial nod. And Mika Marmol moves from his usual centre back role, what he was playing last season, to his more familiar full back role. Um, again, probably an area where we could improve. But for now, 
he is going to be our left back. James Garner, of course, new signing in defensive midfield. Mauricio Chan, Fernando uh, Ferran Torres, Andrea Anderson, Martinez Trejo and Goto leading the line. I've got a feeling this squad is fantastic. <laughs> Maybe it's not. Maybe we're not going to do quite as well as we do with Barnsley. But um, we do have a little bit of money still remaining in the kitty. 7 million, 65 grand per week. We can make improvements in the January transfer window should it be required. And hopefully the finances fix themselves by that point and we might have be able to request a little bit more from the board if we are exceeding, exceeding expectations. Speaking of which, they are fight bravely against relegation. So we're not expected to stay up this season. We are just expected to fight bravely. But I need to beat Barnsley. Sixth place in the Premier League. I'm not sure if the squad's quite capable of that. We've got two, well, we've got probably three close to world-class players. Ferran Torres, I'm including in that. Um, well, I'll just have to wait and see how the season goes and if our players perform, at least to my own expectations. So the first game of the season then is a home tie and it is going to be against Newcastle United. Keep now for that Barnsley game because that's going to be the next episode almost certainly. So for the first game then, only a couple of changes to our preferred starting eleven. Savage comes in at left back and Marmol moves into that centre half role. Thomas Nielsen comes in on the right hand side as Ferran Torres is currently still returning from injury. Jude Bellingham, who we haven't spoken about yet, gets a starting attack midfield over Andre Anderson as he's still recovering from injury. And that's pretty much it. I didn't Jude Bellingham, I said I was going to build my side around him. <laughs> yeah, that, that went well. I'll still try and give him plenty of game time though, as with a lot of the boys who you've seen me sign who maybe don't quite make the first 11. But Newcastle United are the side today, our first game in the Premier League. Obviously, they've been in the Premier League a long time. Ben Wilmot showed up on a lot of my searches for a very, very good English centre-half. Um, but let's see how we compete. Let's see if these players can gel quickly. It's probably going to be a slow start as it was with Barnsley, so I'm not going to be too concerned about defeats and draws in games where we might expect a little bit more but um hopefully after 10 15 games or so we can then start pushing on and getting wins premier league action for the first time with birmingham city leave a comment down below if you think we are going to beat barnsley i think it's pretty much it's going to be a big stretch to actually be able to beat what we managed to accomplish with barnsley but we'll keep an eye on things um and review that at the end of this season as newcastle go close early on Highlight now, free kick for Newcastle. Roberts plays in, dotted is there. We managed to get clear and Keith Lonsdale can bring the ball forward to Goto. A lot of space on this right hand side. I'm guessing it's Thomas Nielsen. It's not, it's Jude Bellingham who's come forward. It goes for goal. It's a good challenge by the Newcastle defender. And that is going to be that for the first half. Birmingham nil, Newcastle nil. Would I take a draw at the end of this? Probably. Um, but uh, we'll wait and see how things go. And hopefully we can improve in this second half. One of the things I think we've got an advantage of over that Barnsley squad is I think we're a lot stronger in depth, particularly in the attacking areas. Whereas uh, if somebody got injured when we were at Barnsley, we were pretty much playing a much inferior option when they did come on. As we pick up with a highlight here, 62 minutes in, uh, Keith Lonsdale on the right hand side tries to feed it to Thomas Nielsen. It's cut out though. Oh, Thomas, you're getting sent off, aren't you? Absolutely fantastic start of the season. Down to 10 men. <laughs> Jude Bellingham can actually play on that right hand side and we are going to actually stick with Jude and we will go to a more cautious team mentality now being down to 10 men but unfortunately there's a highlight straight away with 25 minutes to go. The keeper was messing it about with it there and Sehovic has managed to cut in and cut out the pass and he's brought down by a Newcastle player and we are back going to be level 10, 10 men each that's fine by me. Jude Bellingham isn't having the greatest game in the world so we are going to look to get him off Unfortunately, Ferran Torres is um, not go not available to play, so Alexander Diaz can come on on that right-hand side. And with 10 minutes to go, we will look to make some more changes. Goto's not having the greatest game. Can't really um, afford to take him off right now. Mauricio Chan, don't really want to take him off either. <laughs> See, our options are suddenly limited now. Andre Anderson I would like to bring on, but as we're not playing an attack midfielder through the centre, I think we'll just stick with things how they are. Corner. Played in. Oh, and Naki. Why is Naki Pinner and goal, Sam? It's meant to be the other goalkeeper. Francis Coquelin then puts Newcastle United up front with his first goal of the season. And it's going to be a disappointing way to lose this match. Absolutely horrendous goalkeeping. And it's my own fault. Can we claw it back and get a point from this game? Savage picks up the ball on the left hand side. Only one man to aim at that. It's cleared by Newcastle, but Diaz keeps it alive. Garner. Players are back to Diaz on the edge. Lonsdale. Don't go for goal, Lonsdale. I know you can't shoot. Chan. 
Back to Diaz in the box. He goes for goal himself. Oh, the highlight continues. Ivan Suek plays a forward for Newcastle. We managed to nip in in the defence. Big ball long forward from Keith Lonsdale. Goto's in behind. Can't quite finish it. Got to go very attacking for the final few minutes of the game. Try and get ourselves a point out of this one. Diaz plays the ball back to Garner. Keith Lonsdale. What's he doing with it? Back to Diaz. It's cleared by <coughs> Wilmot. Mirda brings the ball out of defence, finds Chan, a Savage on this left-hand side. Not too many options, but he finds Trio, and we get our goal back. We didn't deserve to lose this game, so I'm very, very glad Pablo Martinez Trio has managed to get a goal on his debut and equalise, giving us a point. Two minutes to go in this match still, though. We're going to go off very attacking and just uh, go normal attacking for the rest of the game. Savage doing well on this left-hand side, then Trio with a fantastic finish. Keeper can do nothing about that one. Final highlight of the game, one and a half minutes left. Uh, I'm going to be down to nine men. No, we're not. Diaz brings the ball out, finds Goto. He's all by himself. He beats one. He's got options at the back post. He goes for goal himself. And this boy is not two and a half stars. I don't care what you say. He is going to be a fantastic striker for us. I have every faith in my managerial capabilities. His first goal of the season, of course. And a goal on his debut. Diaz doing excellent work down the right-hand side since he's came on for after um, Thomas Nielsen's red card. And Goto absolutely superb finish i've never seen a striker score from that angle they always usually hit at the keeper so 2-1 we've managed to snatch a win from the jaws of defeat and there we have it birmingham 2 newcastle 1 first game in the premier league first win well that was a bit of a smash and grab towards the end 88th minute then 94th minute for the goals for us absolutely fantastic we have been fined for ill discipline i don't really care peer the fines border i as long as it doesn't affect my transfer budget. So can we just finish this season now? Uh, sitting in fourth. Currently qualifying for the Champions League. I would absolutely love that. Unfortunately, it's not going to be the case. So we will play forward in the next episode. Then Barnsley and Liverpool. Our former club. And one of the best sides in the league. Seems like a good couple of options for us. Barnsley. Let's see what they've done in the transfer window this season. Have they spent absolutely massive money? Callum Chambers coming in. Adam Armstrong, of course. Alex Mighton, I mean, he's he's okay, he's not superb. Craig Sharon, nah, not for me. Dusan Tadic, 34 years old, he still looks pretty good though. Um, no major selling, so the likes of Lewis Montaneo will still be at the club. Um, it looks like they've gone back to a winger system, which they weren't playing last season. Ian van der Heer is still there. A lot of our, fear, a lot of our boys are still there, which is nice to see. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.